Ahsoka, you done me dirty again. It's episode four. We're going to break it down. God, please help me as I break down episode four of Ahsoka. Four pound, three ounce, baby Jesus. Give me the power to survive the show. Anyway, it's Ahsoka episode four, and I am just about had it up to here with this show. And I told I, I was so irritated with the show that I forgot the, one of the most major irritating things. Spoilers for episode four. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. Slightly more interesting than some of the other episodes, but perhaps the dumbest contrivances I've seen in the show yet. And just it gives you a real insight as to why someone like Dave Filoni, writer and director and uh, the person responsible for like animated Star Wars stuff cannot be left to do anything live action because animation, I find if it just doesn't translate. You, you create these scenarios and as you're watching in live action, you just your mind cannot miss these contrivances. This episode was slightly more interesting, but in the dumbest of ways. So I'm not going to break everything down, but uh, there's a, oh man, anyway, there you have Sabine and Ahsoka, because I don't remember everybody's names, but I'll do my best. They're on the ship talking about their Fifi's. There's literally a five minute intro, intro of them just talking about their Fifi's. Like, oh, are you going to be good? No, are you going to be good? No, girl, you going to be good? And then they send their dumb robot outside, and he's by himself making repairs. Instead of you watching him or putting defenses up or, or literally just paying attention at all, you're too busy talking about your fifis. They go outside and they get involved in this big lightsaber duel, right? Sabine puts on her Mandalorian armor, immediately loses her helmet. <laughs> so stupid. And then they like flash to the, to Hera, Syndulla, the worst mom in all of Star Wars because she brings her dumb kid with her on like the most dangerous mission where she probably would have randomly died if it wasn't for plot armor. So anyway, brings dumb kid. They're going to steal some ships. Of course, they got to bring the tubby guy from all the other shows that you've seen. So I was thinking about this too, because I have no idea where Ahsoka takes place during time. But now that I saw tubby guy, um, you know, the, the kind of heavy set, <laughs> x-wing pilot who's a little too old to be flying now i know it takes place in mando time it's sometime during mando time i assume which we'll get to my last point so anyway um i'm not gonna get to the major spoiler yet but it's about masters and apprentices so there actually was some good scenes but before that, you have some weird, a little dicey lightsaber scenes. I guess Ahsoka, you know, um, the actress is so old that they don't want to have her have any fight scenes. And they must really be trying hard to sell Riva toys. Remember, I did a video on the Riva toy that didn't sell. She's got that weird lightsaber that they were trying to sell. Well, they're still trying to make it a thing. They're like, we're going to make this a thing. So dude gets spinning lightsaber. You would have thought that, so there's uh, the blonde girl, Shin Hati or whatever her name is. There's a pair of Dark Jedi, but there's not really a pair because there's a third one. But they don't explain who the third one is at all. And I was like dead set like, oh man, they're going to have a crazy twist. It's going to be that Ezra cat, isn't it? That like boy that, that Sabine likes. No, it's just some guy in a fart suit. Like, Really? Are you kidding me? So Ahsoka, he starts whipping up his blade real fast. And why would Ahsoka allow her to... Well, why would he, she allow Sabine to fight Shin Hati on her own? You would have thought at some point Shin Hati would have been like, uh, yeah, I already killed you once. And that's what's missing a lot. There's zero dialogue in any of these fight scenes. And there's no like tension because there's plot armor. What made... Most of the duels that you can think of, there's dialogue back and forth between the characters. And one of the only ones that doesn't have dialogue is the battle between Obi-Wan and Darth Maul and Obi-Wan. But that one had tension, and part of the reason why there's no dialogue, A, Darth Maul doesn't talk at all, but B, the built-up tension in it 
there was there there wasn't plot armor. Uh, Kwai John uh, Jing he dies. So like I can accept that. That was a, a pretty incredible lightsaber duel. So I can dig that. This they're fighting it, and you know Sabine's not going to die because they already stabbed her once. So she didn't die then. She's probably going to get stabbed again. And then you know Ahsoka's not going to die yet or whatever. Like you don't know. Like there's a whole thing going on. Um, the other thing I want to point out is the contrivance before I finish this lightsaber duel of there's a ticking clock. The ticking clock is that they're going to find, they're going to set their hyperspace coordinates by to this map that's witchcraft. Why a Jedi says witchcraft when he literally wields magic is beyond me. It's beyond me. And why there's a ticking clock. Literally the entire first ep- the entire episode before it, they were on the planet staring at the star map. They could have started the countdown at any time before then, but they had to wait for Ahsoka to land. And then even then Ahsoka was in no rush. They were in no rush to stop the ticking clock. And then all of a sudden they magically knew, oh, we better get this before they get the hyperspace coordinates. I just th- this is what doesn't translate well. None of that stuff made sense. It was really aggravating to me. So then you get the dumb lightsaber duels, right? Over. Then you actually get a good one, ish, good ish, with Ray Stevens. I just like Ray Stevenson. The guy was amazing. I, I love this guy. He's he's doing a great job. He's his, his like uh, the gravitas he brings, and then Ahsoka is just she's not good. And you would think a man. He's there's literally a part where he's standing like before her. He's like a foot taller than her. And he's wielding like a power style versus like she's supposed to be more agile. Not going to work. Like he he beat her and he should have beaten her. He should have beat her like a rented mule. Um, and then I like the whole part where Sabine caves and just like goes willingly. I don't even know why they ended up buckling, like uh, putting handcuffs on her. I thought that was kind of dumb. But then the ticking time clock ends and Hera... Sindula almost gets her kid killed. Like, <laughs> lady, what are you doing? Bringing your kid in your spaceship, going on a dangerous mission, b- b- breaking orders. Like, what are you? What are you doing, lady? Anyway, I think I described just about everything that irritates me. Bad moms, very important. Just want to point that out to everybody. Last point is, and this is the big spoil. They bring back, like, first of all, I don't think Anakin would say, hello, Snips. I think he would say, hey, Snips, if you even watch the old series, which I barely did, and I barely remember that. And and the important part is, why is this at the, at the time that it is? Now, this could totally be because it's a hallucination. She's on some sort of celestial walk. I don't know what's going on. Is she dreaming? Is she dead? Don't really care that much. But she's old, but Anakin has been aged down, and it's some of the worst... It's terrible. Look at this. It's terrible. They just why did they not de-age him? Like they barely de-aged him. And it actually looked fairly good in Obi-Wan Kenobi. But in this, they they screw it up and they make him. It's like as bad as when Lucas, you know, when he altered the original um Return of the Jedi and he put young Anakin in there when when Luke literally just pulled old uh old Vader's corpse out. And then he puts Anakin. Puts young Anakin as a force ghost. It like, doesn't make any sense. Why is Anakin young here? She's old. Why would he be... He would be whatever, you know, the, the age that she last saw him at? Like, I don't understand. None of it makes sense. And then they just play ominous music. Like, I'm supposed to care. Like, what is going on in this show? What is the plot? Basically, it could be summed up in, like, two sentences. Ahsoka gets her student back because she needs a map. And the map is takes a long time to decode, and the map's going to take them to Thrawn, and that's it. And they can't stop them. I guess I I I don't even understand. And they took whatever. All of it's stupid, waste waste of all of our time. Anakin, they c- couldn't. It, I, I I just don't. This is so poorly written. Lightsaber duels, not even that, not even that exciting. And the one was definitely not exciting because he had a spinny blade. And Ahsoka barely moves, and then he releases a big fart. And I'm like, whatever, this is terrible. So, what did you think? Am I insane? Why do I keep watching this? Do should I? You you let me know below. You know the things. You know the thing. Uh, but I will say, uh, live stream up here, seven thirty p.m. Friday nights, Eastern Standard Time. Come join us. It's a good time. 
Promise it. Better time than Ahsoka. Promise. Lots of jokes. Good stuff. You'll you'll enjoy it. But I'm on to the next one. <laughs>